Yeah, so here we are, the very last lecture of Biology 111 at McGill University. Probably your first, one of your first university classes. Um, I hope you found it useful and we might as well end with something that is of perhaps most direct immediate relevance to our own lives, and that is ourselves, primates. This is a red-tailed monkey, and today's lecture is going to be about primates. So, and I want to do, as usual, and take you to various places in the world where I have been able to interact with and record primate behavior. And that place that I want to start with is Kibali National Park in Uganda. Now, a number of McGill professors worked here for many years, and it has the highest primate density in the world. Let's watch what this colobus monkey does here. He's trying to get across a forest gap, and he doesn't want to go down onto the bottom of the forest. The gap is too big to jump just straight up, so he uses the tree like a pole vault. He or she, of course. And here is another one that shows even more effectively how they're essentially using this tree as a tool, a tool to get around. Colobus monkeys are famous for these kind of aerial skills, and here you see some very young ones that are learning their way around uh, trees and jumping and playing around and getting ready for those big jumps that they will do when they are adults. There are many species of monkeys in Kibali National Park. Here's another colobus monkey. This is a black and white colobus monkey. Black and white colobus monkeys spend a lot of their time just hanging around in the trees uh, and just chilling. So here are some that are uh, scratching an itch here and there and otherwise just having a nap and feeling good about themselves. Now the reason they spend a lot of time hanging around and not doing much is that they're leaf eaters. Leaves are very hard to digest and so they fill up their gut with leaves and then they just kind of chill and let the digestive process work. Certainly the greatest thrill for me in Kibali was to walk through the forest and hear the sound of wild chimpanzees and then to see them right alongside the trail. Now, chimpanzees, much of the time, just kind of chill as well, at least during the middle of the day. This particular chimpanzee is assessing what's going on around it and trying to understand what all of the members of its troop are doing. And you just can't look at a chimpanzee and not see the kinship between ourselves and them. Of course, one of the key features of that kinship is an incredible intelligence. And you can almost look like you're looking at a, another human being that is assessing everything around it in the same, almost the same complex way that we do. That's why today's lecture will merge primates with a discussion of intelligence and the brain and how the brain develops, what the different functions and anatomy of the brain is like. And we can discuss how a complex brain enables one to do complex behavior. Here's a mother chimpanzee and her baby, sometimes when the males are off doing other things and the rest of the troop, uh, the mothers will stay back and just kind of hang out with and look after their babies as a smaller group. And here's one that's grooming its baby, rather aggressively, of course. Now, another thing you might interpret as tool use in chimpanzees is their building of shelters. So here is a, two views of the exact same chimpanzee, one from high above and one from low down, that has built itself a day nest by breaking a bunch of branches down, laying them out, and then just lying on this to rest during the middle of the day. They also build larger, more sophisticated shelters every night. Again, tool use, although not exclusive to primates, is certainly something that has been developed to an extreme extent within primates. There isn't much primary forest left in Uganda, and you can see the little patches running like a string of pearls there beside the lakes. And so let's go from Kibali National Park, where we looked at chimpanzees, to the Bawindi Impenetrable National Park, where these very closely defined borders to the park that are protected on the inside because in Bawindi National Park, you have gorillas. Now there are a number of different groups of gorillas within the park. And most of the time they spend down in these forest clearings, uh, eating leaves and moving slowly about. 
That is the silverback gorilla, who is the dominant male of the group. Those are a number of uh, younger kids growing up, and then you see some females coming along uh, on the right-hand side there. Like most of the other primates, at least the apes, that is chimpanzees, orangutans, and gorillas, gorillas just spend much of their time just kind of hanging out and munching on vegetation. I think there's a really cool sequence here where I'm filming him from above and you can see him taking a look around trying to figure out what he wants to eat and you can see the delicacy with which he's going to eat this particular stalk. He's going to peel off the hard outer edge and then just slowly work his way down and eat the juicy insides. There are tons and tons and tons of insects around. I don't think they were biting insects because they didn't seem to be bothering the gorillas and they certainly weren't bothering us, although they were everywhere. But you could see them just all around all the time and the uh, gorillas just ignored them. Just like the other gorillas in the group, the big silverbacks don't do much most of the time. But of course they will engage in very aggressive actions against other males of the group that are trying to assume a dominant role and they will play an important role in defending the young gorillas. So here are a couple that are playing and uh, they often stay very close to the large silverback male because then they won't see any threat from the other males within the group. But when they do go off, just like all primates, including humans, they can go off on their own and get in a lot of mischief and uh, while the adults are sleeping. I said earlier that the big silverback male gorillas don't do much, much of the time. But there was an instance that we were watching where uh, a female made a loud noise implying that maybe there was some danger from the adjacent males and the big silverback came over and did an aggressive display. A lot of the habitats that primates live in, particularly the great apes, are highly endangered. And so we, as we watch this howler monkey in Argentina, I want to make the point that there's a lot of interactions between humans and primates in general, but great apes in particular. In fact, this forest that you're looking at here burned completely to the ground this year, destroying all of the habitat for the howler monkeys. Now in Panama, you see a lot of other interactions between humans and primates. In particular, humans will feed the primates. These are called Joffrey's tamarins, and they are on a feeder where people put out fruit for them, uh, so because they're fun and cute to have around. Of course, they can be annoying at times too, as you'll see in a minute when I take you back to Uganda and Kibale National Park to the baboons. So baboons tend to get into the garbage. I watched a male baboon pulling on the water spout from a large water tank, essentially tearing the water spout out of the tank and destroying what was a very expensive water tank. So these uh, baboons are a major problem and you have to lock your doors all the time and you have to make sure that you keep everything of value away from them. And that is true uh, in many places in the world. I've also had that uh, occur to me in Indonesia where you had to protect yourselves. But there can be other, some other interactions where uh, this is a bluish monkey, it's called, and it's actually from the Congo. And it was kept on a private island because it was a rescue monkey. And uh, they had a game that they played, the keeper and uh, the monkey. <laughs> this is a vervet monkey in South Africa that seemed to be very intrigued by the sound of my camera. And so it was almost playing like that sort of you know, cat and mouse game you play with your cat, uh, where it was trying to see what was going on and pretending like it was uh, going to get me. Now, I want to close again with some of the positive interactions between primates and humans, and that is potentially ecotourism. This is my brother, and he came with me to Uganda and saw chimpanzees, and he also saw gorillas. Now, in Bowindi Impenetrable Forest, it's a very important place for conservation because the gorillas bring a lot of money into the local economy from tourists that come to watch the gorillas. Makes me wonder what's happening right now when of course tourism will be way lower. Now here the guide is trying to keep my brother safe here and 
because you're supposed to stay away from the gorillas, but the problem is they're moving around so much and they're spread out that it's really hard to do. Now here you see an interaction between several different males. They're protecting their babies. Yeah, so watching primates out in nature is pretty amazing and inspiring and really makes you feel a kindred, an evolutionary, and it really makes you feel an evolutionary kinship with what amounts to our cousins descended from Yep, so hanging out with primates in nature is pretty amazing and it really makes you feel a kinship with them, which of course is logical because they are our most closely related, because they are our most, because they are our closest evolutionary relative and therefore, good enough.